Well, I wanted to get some fresh air, and it looks like I got it. We're back. On the old Redwood Highway. US 101. The Redwood Highway, just as it sounds, is the classic old American road that travels up through one of the wonders of the world, the California Redwoods. Basically from San Francisco all the way on up to Oregon. Along the way, there are some of the most beautiful, scenic, natural wonders, and some of the tallest trees on Earth. But of course, I love it because because of the old roadside history all the way back to the 1920s. And up until the 1960s, when there was a period of devastating floods, the Redwood Highway was a major automobile destination. There were all kinds of old cafes, restaurants, tourist cabins, logging camps, old hotels and motels, and of course, roadside attractions. And honestly, for as beautiful as this area is, and it's unlike any other place on Earth, there is very little left of the old classic Redwood Highway. Which is why I filmed a series up on the Redwood Highway, of history videos, we uncovered a lot of stuff from the past, and it's been a while since I've been up here. And since we were escaping town for the weekend and coming up to sort of the Northern Bay Area to get the van worked on, I knew immediately that put us in striking distance of the old Redwood Highway and some of my favorite stops like the Peg House here. Now there's been a roadside stop here since the 1920s, but in 1961, the Peg House was built by a Danish road engineer named Hans Hauer in a mortise and tenon style that means it was all joined with pegs instead of nails and screws. And today this place is awesome. There's an assortment of items for sale inside, camping supplies, souvenirs, books, snacks, tie-dye shirts, you name it. Look at this. You can get everything from spirit friends to squid hats in here. I just love the layers of history. And the sick merch isn't bad either. Plus, much more importantly, next door to the peg house proper is the peg Big House Grill. Look at this place out here. Look at all of these people. And look at all the dogs. There's dogs everywhere. They're all out here to get a piece of what they serve up at this small hut. There's quite the menu out here and the hand-painted signs advertise food such as oysters from Humboldt Bay and of course Humboldt grass-fed beef burgers. In addition to the sandwiches, breakfast burritos, hand-squeezed lemonade, and other items available out here. None of which am I partaking of, but when on the road, it's important to feed your alley. Trust me, the last thing you want in the van with you is a hangry alley. Ugh. This is actually the first time I have ever been out here that I haven't seen the live music kick up yet. Normally the peg house is bumping, dude. People come from miles around to come pegging people come out here to drink and party and buy plants. Speaking of plants, look at this in the bushes. I never noticed these guys before. Some old school garden gnomes. I don't know why, but I love a good garden gnome. There's just something about them. Look at this, I pop back into the peg house proper really quick. Look at this devil mask in here. Weird. Looks like sometimes the parties out on the patio take a wild turn. Oh my gosh, that is one of the best plush Bigfoots I have ever seen. Sixty dollars, wow. Ooh, I got some, some bags out here. Fashionable. And look at this t-shirt. Who wouldn't want to wear that? Oh, herbal, herbal blankets. Oh, herbal blankets. Yeah. Crystals. Mushroom cups. There's a lot of stuff because there's a state park across the street where lots of people go camping. I love bear! So you need both camping supplies and the things to keep you entertained out here, apparently. Dude, there's a lot of big feet out here. A couple years ago when I was doing the main Redwood Highway series, I was disappointed by the lack of Bigfoot merch available, but... There's so much more now, including a Bigfoot nightlight. Dude, even meditating Bigfoot. Now, as you can see here, the peg house, leg it, right where we are, is sort of the very beginning, the very bottom of chainsaw carved bear territory. You're gonna see a lot more of these the farther north you head. Good old classic redwood wood carvings everywhere. You got a couple of thousand bucks, you can get yourself a huge bear or Bigfoot. For a couple of hundred bucks, you can pick yourself up some carved mushrooms and miniature bears out here. I don't know if you know this, but that's a very good deal. Anyway, as much as I love the peg house, it's not the primary thing I was hoping to see today. So, time to keep heading north on the old Redwood Highway to our next destination. And this next spot, even more than the peg house, I would dare to say, is also a classic. It's the world famous tree house. And unfortunately, 
it's closed. Now we've discussed the history of this place before, how it used to be called Lily Redwood Park, and the way this 250 plus foot redwood tree was featured in early Ripley's, believe it or not, cartoons. It was a very famous roadside stop, this tree house that you could go inside and the gift shop and everything. We've explored it quite a bit. In the early years, it was run by a lady named Minnie Stoddard Lily, who was a pioneering school teacher out here. But in recent years, it was always hit or miss as to when it was going to be open because the husband and wife couple who ran the place and bought it, I think in the year 2000, well, sadly, the husband element passed away and poor lady that was running this place all by herself, couldn't keep it open all the time, and it looks like it hasn't been opened up for a while. And I remember asking her about the old international trucks that were parked out here in the parking lot in front of these old carvings and in front of the old treehouse snack bar over here. She said they were her late husband's and they are no longer here, which makes me wonder, are there new owners? Has the place been semi-abandoned? I see lots of cars and boats and things parked here, so. Who knows, somebody's around. But it's not open at the moment. Minnie Stoddard Lily, look her up. Lily with an E-Y, Lily. She was a pioneering school teacher who came out here without her husband pretty much for the most part. And an entrepreneur extraordinaire who opened Lily's Redwood Park. You can see some of the cabins still exist back there where she lived and worked here at her Redwood Treehouse, which I'm hoping isn't closed forever. After all, we are still before Memorial Day. We're here in the off season. It might as well still be winter up here, May or not. And with all the crazy rain they've gotten this year and extra snow up in Northern California, there hasn't been a lot of travel up and down the highway. So maybe this is just an extended seasonal closure closure. We'll find out. Anyways, open or not, I always have to stop here to take a look. It's a classic Redwood Highway attraction, and it's just right around the corner from the place that I've been aiming at all day. And if you watch my Redwood Highway series, you'll know what's right around that corner, you guys. It's time to add a little confusion to our situation. That's right, my friends. We're going back to Confusion Hill. <laughs> We're back at one of my favorite roadside attractions of all time. This might be my favorite roadside attraction in all of California, as a matter of fact. And let's just hope it's open. Okay, I see people. I see people. Get excited, Allie. Scream, scream, scream with excitement. You're not screaming. Oh. Oh my gosh, this is like the promised land for me. I do tend to genuinely get excited about every place that I go. And I admit, I'm kind of one of those people that wherever I am at the moment is my favorite place. Whatever I'm looking at is my favorite thing. But Confusion Hill is genuinely one of my all-time favorite places on planet Earth. It is your quintessential classic American roadside attraction. It's in the forest, which adds an air of mystery to an already interesting and mysterious mysterious location. There is, of course, a gravity house here, like the Santa Cruz mystery spot of the Oregon Vortex that dates all the way back to 1949. It was built by a guy named George Hudson. The Disney animated show Gravity Falls was partially based off Confusion Hill, all of which I've detailed in a very long, very extensive video all about Confusion Hill and its many attractions here. Now remember, like I said, we're getting here in the off season, pre-memorial day. Almost nothing on the Redwood Highway is truly open until after Memorial Day, and that is when Confusion Hill is in full bloom because that's when it's finally warm enough for one half of its awesome attractions to open up. And I'm talking about that mountain train ride. But yes, dude, if I win the lottery tomorrow and Confusion Hill was up for sale on Tuesday, then on Thursday, I'd be the one that bought it. On Friday, I might be hanging my head in my hands going, what have I done? But on Monday, I'd be excited again. Okay, let's stop with that. Look at this place, Con. Fusion Hill, home of many squirrels and chipmunks and chipolopes. We'll get to those in a second. Look at this nestled among ancient redwood trees that are so, so tall. The tallest living things on the planet with weird redwood burl fountains and redwood slab benches and tables. This is the ultimate place, the ultimate all-time favorite, most epic roadside attraction in California. Just look at it. The colors nestled in the forest. Red, yellow, question marks. Already I can smell the incense coming from inside the gift shop and look at all of the redwood carvings. Look at this place, I love that weird mid-century lean to the glass. Look at the angle of this building. I love 
the hand-painted ancient wooden signs. I love the redwoods. I love how still and beautiful it is out here. There are so many bears holding fish and wearing hats. This place makes me proud to be an American. Well, every place makes me proud to be an American. Look at this. I haven't spent that much time out here looking at this. Look at all of these redwood chunks embedded into the concrete. And then look at the big redwood slab table out here. You could sit out here and watch the highway go by. Well, you could for decades and decades until they bypassed the old redwood highway that you can see here and built a more modern bridge and modern safer highway that luckily isn't too far away from Confusion Hill's front door. Although it's definitely not as close as it used to be, that's for sure. Look at these guys, look at this. I love the age of them. I love how everything out here feels like it's got a nice patina of time on it. And some of these redwood bears <laughs> have the funniest faces I've ever seen on a chainsaw carving. Look, look at these little guys. I love the cowboy bear. I love the mustache on this dude. Look at them pointy shoes and his shiny guns and he'll be your huckleberry, that's for sure. Oh, I can see the chipmunks that Allie has been looking at. They're eating all their chipmunk feed out here. Look at this ancient hand-painted sign. Look at that. I, I'm always blown away by this place before I even get inside. Just the parking lot gets me all excited. All the hand-painted stuff. The crazy lettering, the tape, and the paper. The world's tallest redwood freehand chainsaw carving. That is one very tall totem pole. Look at the size of it. Yeah. I always forget about the Confusion Hill shoe house. Look at this old redwood shoe. This is a 1947 parade float from Fort Bragg, California. Look at how long it survived. That's how durable redwood is. I'm sure they've changed the rope shoelaces on it from time to time. Look at all that paint. Layers and layers of it. Kids of all ages for generations have come inside the shoe, poked their hands out the little windows, looked at the little fence, brushed the little spider webs out of their hair. It's one of the coolest places in America, dude. Literally. I love roadside attractions. Almost any roadside attraction, big or small. You can put a carved wooden cowboy or a satellite dish UFO in a field and I'll go film it. I get excited about murals and plaques on the sides of buildings in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? So this place with all the red and yellow and craziness is fun for me just in the parking lot. Look at these giant redwood carvings of this mountain lion going up to get the eagle and its nest. Look at those huge carvings. That alone would be worth pulling over for. But let's not forget for the Disney fans, we've got another guy out here on the redwood trees. That is Bill Cipher. Kind of a long story behind Bill Cipher. That is the official Bill Cipher of Gravity Falls. That's that old Disney animated show. There was a worldwide scavenger hunt to find him. They finally found him in Oregon, like the fans of the show. And then he was donated to Confusion Hill because this place inspired the mystery shack in that show. And the architectural inspiration for it, because you know, it was sort of an A-frame. It's actually across the street, but I've already shown that a million times. Let's go in and see what Confusion Hill is like during the off season. First thing you notice right away is that the snack bar, which is usually bumping and filling the parking lot up with smoke and the smell of burgers and hot dogs that I can't eat, is closed until Memorial Day. Doug's Doghouse. That's okay. Apparently they still serve plenty of seeds and feed to the chipmunks out here. And there are a lot of chipmunks in this place. So many, they started to mutate and become chipalopes. Don't worry, that wasn't a chipalope. We'll see chipalopes inside, I think. Look at this, even just the ramp to get in, the signs, yeah. the lettering, the craziness, the wackiness. It is my favorite, favorite place. Look at this book right here. Some smug slug. I've known some smug slugs in my time. Oh my gosh. It is good to be back. The Confusion Hill gift shop. Because if there's one thing I love more than roadside attractions, it's the sweet merch spots next to them. There's such a mix of awesome swag in here. Look, they've got magnets over here of every kind. They've got books over here, including a lot of Gravity Falls books. Now that is pretty cool for the kiddos. Ooh, speaking of the kiddos, look at this. Some smug slug. I gotta tell you guys, I've known a lot of smug slugs in my time. Look at this. There's one. A chipolope. They've got carved redwood bears in here 145 each bigfoot books crazy signs look at these crazy signs oh my gosh they're crazy oh look at the little 
miniature wood carvings. Ah, look at this. There are nature guys and geos and magnets. <gasps> Grow your own redwood tree. There are bears and chipmunks and squirrels. And always so many wooden boxes. Every time I come here, I think, oh, maybe they're old. Maybe they'll run out of these one day. Somehow, Confusion Hill has access to a limitless supply of things like this. Where do they get them from? Look at this. Look at this dragon here. And they're all stamped with Confusion Hill on the side. Look at what home would be complete without footprints. And then across the way, look at this. Live redwood burls, picture frames, snow globes, even Bigfoot snow globes. This isn't even everything, and this is just the first aisle. And then look what Allie found back here in the corner. A new kind of stuffed chipolo. They didn't used to look like this before, and last time we were here, they were completely out of them. Look at this. The chipolopes have returned. They're holding little peanuts. If you look at this, there are kazoos and Bigfoot rescue kids. There are brain games. Route 66 pencils. So, so many toys of every size, shape, and description, including wooden toys. Look at the old logging trucks. That is cool. There are so many fine products. Look at this Bigfoot foot box over here. Look at that. Lots of handcrafted redwood boxes. Those are really neat. Look at this. They've even got Gravity Falls pins and stickers now. Oh, it's the pig. I forget the pig's name. Waddles. It's the pig. Waddles. Oh, look at these Redwoods patches here. California one. Chipolope Crossing. It's really neat to see old-fashioned souvenirs here, like these wooden rubber band guns, or like these old pirate guns. Just toy guns in general, really. I wasn't expecting a plastic 12-gauge shotgun in here. You got your giant wooden pencil from Confusion Hill. Old school plastic army men style western toys. Wasn't expecting them to go this old school though. When were these made? Man, what is that smell? <gasps> Redwood incense. Yeah. Oh, I can feel the mellow setting in. I feel relaxed now. That's how they get you to buy the mugs. Nah, I'm just kidding. Nobody has to be forced to buy these. Look how awesome they are. I was outside of Confusion Hill, by the way, and a couple people came up to me and they were like, what? What is this supposed to be? Apparently all the signage and crazy stuff outside of Confusion Hill. It's genuinely confusing. So it's doing its job. Got some Confusion Hill fridge magnets. <gasps> Confusion Hill t-shirts back here. Ooh, forgot to mention earlier. They've got cow seeds. This place and I were just meant for each other. Look at all those cool hand-carved redwood trees there for your wall. See, some of the new Confusion Hill shirts are really cool. Look at these. These are weird. Look at this. They even finally have a Confusion Hill mountain train ride shirt. All right. The gift shop is fun. The gift shop is neat, especially considering how many footprints poems it has. But I have got to get outside into Confusion Hill. So it's time for us to pay for our swag, pay for our admission, and get outside. Once you pay that very reasonable admission, you are allowed back in to Confusion Hill proper, which is full of so many wonderful things, but I'm not going to lie to you. As neat as all the stuff out here is, my very favorite thing at Confusion Hill, the number one greatest attraction to me, is now, was in the past, and shall forever be, the epic mountain train ride, which unfortunately, at the moment, is closed. See, the mountain train ride here has this sort of alpine switchback situation to get up on top of the hill. And during the winter, it can be very slippery, very icy, very dangerous, and in the spring, it can be too wet, the tracks need to be cleaned up, and there just aren't enough people, especially during the week, to justify its operation. Not to mention the best part of the mountain train ride, which is Tony the Train Man, who is your tour guide up there, has to work a different job during the school year. So you gotta wait till after Memorial Day. And then you absolutely must take the historic, the scenic, the incredibly hilarious, epic mountain train ride with Tony the Train Man, if possible. I don't know if they ever have anybody else running the train rides these days, not since the old owner passed away, sadly. But every time I've been on it, it's been Tony the Train Man, and it has been an experience. Now, if you want to see what the train ride is like, you can go back to my epic Confusion Hill episode where we got to ride on the train. Now, if you want to see what the train ride is like, you can check out our previous episode at Confusion Hill, the real-life Gravity Falls, where we take the train ride, we get the whole tour from Tony the Train Man himself. It's kind of fun wandering around here in the off-season, though, because since I'm not just looking forward to the train ride, I'm paying a lot more attention to all these weird little 
little details, all the years. The decades have built up like accoutrement out here. This place has been open since 1949. That's when the Gravity House first opened up here. You can see some very old pictures from George Hudson's original Gravity House that has survived all these decades. We're gonna head up there in a second. But even the train ride is 50 years old and they've accumulated so many weird logging tools, not just because of the logging industry around here, but because at one point the top of this property on top of the hill where the train ride goes was actually logged for the old growth redwoods itself. So this place has been through a series of owners and different senses of humor. Sometimes it focuses more on the mystery of the gravity house and the strange vortex here. Sometimes it focuses more on the campiness and the wackiness, like Tony the Train Man. Sometimes there's an emphasis on the beautiful redwoods and the logging history out here. But whatever the emphasis, Confusion Hill is always confusing and exciting. Uh-oh, look at this. Allie found a Nikon Coolpix camera. Look at that vintage camera. Remember when people carried cameras around? Speaking of vintage, here's the original Chipolopes. Look at them. Nailed down to this log, I believe it was Chester and Rose. Ah, the Chipolopes have survived. I've never noticed all the redwood carvings out here. So many old informational things. So I like the layers of history. Like, what was this? Nobody remembers. There's all this different stuff that you can see, like the gravity pulling in different directions, and the the magnet and the the polarization of the world, and I don't know what you're supposed to do with it. Oh, do not spin. I think what you're supposed to do is take some of these little metal shavings, or like tiny pieces of like a, I don't know, like wire filament. They're almost like little metal hairs. You put them on the tip of the rod, and then you spin it towards the south, and you notice how much extra time it stays on. And you spin it slowly, because you do not spin the rod, even though you're supposed to spin the rod very slowly. You don't spin it, but you do. Spin it. See the confusion? Confusion! The thing that's so cool about Confusion Hill is that most of the places like this, the strange vortexes of gravity and the stand over here and stand over there. Look, you're shorter than this person's taller than you. Most of these types of attractions are guided. Like you have to have a little tour guide with you that's like stand here, stand there, and explaining the vortex and pumping you up with all kinds of information and wacky theories. So something like this, like the two slabs that you stand on, and supposedly the person that stands on the north slab looks taller than the person on the south slab. At Confusion Hill, Allie and I could just go on this thing. We can stand on our slabs, take our time, look at how like, okay, I'm a little taller than her, and then we switch sides, move down, move down, and whoa, now I look a lot taller than her. Look at, she got taller somehow. At least that's how it feels. It's an illusion, though. An illusion of confusion! Anyway, the point is, at Oregon Vortex or Santa Cruz Mystery Spot or any of those places, not only would you not be allowed to film and hold your camera, there'd be a big tour group looking at you. You might not even be the ones allowed to stand on here and check out the illusions and the confusions. Confusion Hill, it's all self-guided. You have time to play with the level, make sure it's actually flat, try and figure out why your mind is deceiving you, or if it's a vortex of gravity. Hey, wait a minute. Look at this, big old tree came down. Mystery! There's no tour group to wait for. There's nobody to answer your questions. No one to tell you why there are flamingos in the trees. Just a few crazy, wacky signs to lead you towards the old gravity house here. The original attraction, the Confusion Hill. Look at this wacky place. Oh my gosh. You're automatically leaning to keep balance with the gravitational pull. I think what that means is you're starting to tilt sideways with the shack. They're trying to tell you that the shack is upright compared to the gravitational forces of nature or something. Look at this place. Look at this place of mystery. So many weird things happen in here. Look at the sign. Rain drains north off the high side of the building. Off the high side. It says they had to put the roofing on backwards because of the unusual flow. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at the water draining up off of this trough here. It's going up. Look at the sign falling down. Oh, no. There's definitely some maintenance to do before the season opens up. Look at this place. This place is so old. 1949. It is so old, it is literally bursting at the seams. It has been patched and patched and broken and dinged and banged and scratched and well loved through its many decades of use. Whoa, I am off balance already. Just look at the floor here. Look at all of the patching on the floor. Okay, we're going in, going in to the confusion. Ugh. Normally they'd have a tour group like 
go against the back of this wall, and then face down this way while the guide would show you all the tricks and shenanigans. Here you get to do it yourself. Even when you're standing... Where you think it's level though, this whole place feels like it's tilting over, gonna fall over, like you're gonna lean this way. No, I need to lean this way. And look, at here's the gravity chair here. Here's the you can walk on the wall. I forgot about all this stuff. Or how about this one? When hanging from overhead bar, your feet are pulled far to the north. And look at this old school George Hudson photograph of the mystery as your feet get pulled to the north. Okay, let's try it out. All right, let's see which way my feet go. That way is north. If I hold on to the bar, I think I'm a little taller than that guy though, so I kind of have to drop down and, oh, oh, the gravity! Oh, 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 what just happened to me? I'm so confused. You remember this place now, right, Allie? Yeah. You love confusion, Hill. You love to be confused. That's why you love me so much. Yay! Look at this, there's all kinds of funky activities to do, like put the bottle on the footprints, you can see it's rolling uphill. And there's all these really confusing signs about comparing your height on here. I mean, does that make any sense to you? One of these gravity chairs, you sit in this, you try to get up without using your arms, and it's supposed to be impossible. I've been a guinea pig long enough, here, you do it. You take a seat in that chair right there. See how this works, okay. Take a seat, take a seat. Now, without using your hands or arms, don't stick your arms forward, try to get up. Try to stand up. I can't. Just try to lean forward and stand up. Come on, Allie, you can do it. I can't. Get up! Okay, just do whatever you have to to get up now. Do you actually have to push to get up? Yes. Weird, a weird <laughs> gravity chair. The chair of confusion. Good thing they didn't build the restrooms right here. You'd never be able to get off the john. All right. I'm gonna be the next guinea pig. I'm about to walk up the wall using the mysterious gravity tilting powers. All right, here we go. Oh, I can feel myself tilting away, tilting away. Weird. I can't! I'm too confused! Look at this, look at the way we're leaning out towards certain doom and not falling! Okay, now I'm falling out! Anyway, you guys get the general idea. There's a crazy, wacky, tilted, wild house of mystery that not enough people respect, apparently. And uh, you can do all the kinds of stuff like place this golf ball over here and watch it mysteriously roll uphill. Ho, ho, ho! Bet you never thought you'd see that in your life, Allison Page! Wow! You can see this gravity ball here pulled away by the strange magnetic forces. Whoa! And possibly other stuff? Other stuff as well? Weird! Lots of little tricks and little old school things happening here. I'm honestly not smart enough to know how they all work. I mean, I know, for example, but that must technically be rolling up all uphill. Even though to me it appears like it's downhill. That or there's strange, mysterious, mystery vortex spirits of the redwoods and something creepy going on out here. Maybe aliens. Definitely maybe aliens. Look at this! I know it's something about the tilt of the hill and the tilt of the shack and the, the tilt of your brain. That makes it all work the way that it works. But I have never been able to figure it completely out. To this day, no matter how many times I step in here, I am righteously confused. All right, I'm on the north. I'm on the north, so I should look taller. Am I taller? Well, I'm, all, I'm always taller, but let's look at this. Let's switch. Now, do I appear shorter? You look a little taller. Yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit, a little bit taller now. Okay, wait, switch. Now you look smaller. <laughs> taller. Smaller! Weird! Anyway, I am still confused after all this time, like I said. And, no matter how many times I go into the Confusion Hill Gravity Shack, Gravity Land Experience, whatever it's called, Mystery Shack, if I spend any amount of time in there, I get kinda queasy. It's kinda weird. There's some sick force of nature going on inside of that mystery madness. Normally, 
It goes away after a lovely mountain train ride, but today we don't have that option. See, I got to come up north and fix my van. Yesterday, my buddy Adrian was fixing all the wiring. We were fixing the switches. The windows go up and down permanently now. They're all fixed. I got to check out some private land that he's managing and working on. Today, I get to come up and see Confusion Hill and the Redwood Highway. But ultimately, Allie is going to get hers as well because coming up anywhere near the redwood highway mendocino county etc and what have you means that i've got to take Allie to her favorite coastal town so she's getting excited getting eager to leave here because she knows we're heading towards some of her favorite childhood haunts and the place where i proposed how romantic of course we're not quite done on the redwood highway just yet there's still a little bit more to see as we make our way over there. I'm starting to think Allie's right and we should head west because we definitely don't want to head this way. Oh no. Dude, I love this place so much. I was worried that I was going to be disappointed being here in the off season without Tony the train man and his crazy train ride. And believe me, I'm a little sad that that's not happening. But it's still really gorgeous up here. It's beautiful, fresh air, the sound of the highway, the wind and the redwood trees. So many wacky fun things to look at. Turns out Confusion Hill is a great stop any time of year. Man, I never realized how much winter does a number on this place. All the wet and the snow and the rain, the ice. I never really thought about how hard it is to maintain this place and keep all this wooden stuff and buildings made out of plywood and everything intact. At some point, relatively soon, this place is gonna need a lot of restoration work. And like any other small mom and pop business located on the highway, subject to weather conditions and road conditions. And especially post-pandemic, Confusion Hill is going to have a heck of a time, a challenging situation, staying open and having the budget to do the necessary repairs and all that stuff. So please make sure you stop by all the little hole in the wall places like this. America's great roadside attractions and pick up a stuffed chipolo, some cow seeds, whatever you can do to help keep the history and mystery of places like this alive. Same goes for other small businesses like this show. You can pick up some sweet merch or support the show in other ways down in the links below, but we won't talk about me right now. The last couple of years has been a tough time for everyone, but especially for small businesses or individual proprietors. Things are still wonky everywhere, especially out anywhere to do with travel, whether it's a travel show, whether it's a travel destination. Still gonna take a long time to recover, so yeah. Basically, go head outside, head down the highway, stop at that little roadside attraction, get yourself a stuffed chipolope, and take that fun pick. Fun pick! Okay, I'm here now. Extra fun pick! We definitely do not want Confusion Hill going the way of the tree house that we just saw around the corner, the giant old school redwood tree house. Now, I've documented a lot of closed attractions, half closed attractions, broken down old tumbling down motel buildings and old abandoned resorts up and down the Redwood Highway. And let me tell you, the ones that are still standing, even the abandoned ruins of them, are few and far between. For every single abandoned motel or open attraction you see, seriously, 30, 40, 50 have disappeared completely. Bulldoze to make room for highways or just to send it back to nature or just to remove a derelict fire hazard. Just making an educated guess, I would guess at maybe 5% of the old redwood highway structures are even still standing, whether abandoned or open. This is why every dumb sticker and soda and bag of chips and chipolope that you buy at a place like this really matters. And why taking a little extra time on your trips to go the scenic route and pull over at places like this is so important. Honestly, up in the redwoods with the tallest living things on the planet, these giant redwood trees, trees taller than the Matterhorn, trees taller than the Disneyland Castle, by a lot, mind you, trees taller than skyscrapers. I mean, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with this scenery up here. I'm definitely coming back again to ride the mountain train ride sometime this year. I missed it last year, and I miss my friend Tony the Train Man and uh, Rocky the Raccoon up there. Ancient trees and ancient jokes, what's not to love? For now, I think Allie and I are gonna tromp around Confusion Hill a little bit more together, and then hit the road backwards, actually, down the Redwood Highway to another spot before eventually, yes, we'll make it to the coast just for you. Where are we going next, wizard? How the heck should I know? You tell me. Why is he being so uncooperative? Maybe it's part of the confusion. You have to pay him. Oh yeah, I don't have any change. Now we'll never know where we're going next. Look at my speech-inspired alley. 
And now she's getting a shirt. She can't help herself. She's got to support confusion hell. Confusion hell. Dude, it hurts my soul not turning right and continuing north on the Redwood Highway. But that'll have to wait for later on in the year when it's a little warmer and when Tony the Train Man comes back to Confusion Hill, I'll have a really good excuse to come back. Plus, I always love driving up to Oregon, checking out Enchanted Forest. Plenty to see, plenty to do, heading north on US 101, that's for sure. All right, before we turn and head west towards the coast, we're headed down the Redwood Highway again towards another attraction. It's an old favorite romantic spot for Allie and I. The drive through Tree Park, once known as Underwood Park and home to the chandelier tree. This is one of our favorite places to stop on any trip through Northern California. Look at that, the old Underwood Park dance hall up there. No one knows it's there. As you may have guessed, this place has a long history and was also part of my Redwood Highway series. Boy, this van is a lot wider than the Mustang. Not really, but it feels wider. I don't want to break any of these little sticks on the sides of the car protecting the Ewoks from the rampaging vehicles. Whoa! Look at that, you can still see some of the stone bridges from the old Underwood Park days. There's actually another drive through tree here before the current chandelier tree became the famous drive through tree. The famous drive through tree that we, sadly, in this van will definitely not fit inside. Look at that. 315 feet tall, 21 foot diameter, 2400 years old, and they couldn't pop a hole in it big enough to let my van come through with the big bubble top roof. Oh man. Now you might think carving a hole through a giant living redwood tree so you can drive cars through it is wrong, but I would say that you're wrong because this place has got more people in it than any other place we've seen all day, today, or yesterday. And each and every one of them paid 15 bucks to bring their car in here. Which means that this place is by far the best preserved property on the old Redwood Highway. And no longer is it full of tourist cabins and dance halls, but they've been able to preserve all of the big redwood trees in their forest. Their big wide open lawn is still a haven for migrating geese and ducks and deer roam out there and elk. Because of the hole in that tree, they were able to rename this place, the drive through tree park, get customers paying here to preserve the redwoods, preserve the scenery, and they were able to close most of it off to foot traffic, which is frustrating for me because I want to explore the old Underwood Park area. But now you're basically limited to one small driving path through these beautiful trees adorned by redwood carvings, and then you get a chance to drive through here. Take your fun pick on foot or with the car. Check out the gift shop, buy yourself some sweet swag. We actually have a couple of carved big feet in our house. There's one in my parents' house that came from this place. And you, uh, then you get the heck out of here. Actually, those big feet carvings, they have quite the story behind them. The artist, a story of creativity and family and murder. It's a story for another time, though. Oh, by the way, not only can you drive through a tree and see some owls that are carved out of redwood here, you can get a Pepsi. Somebody tell Mikey! Allie loves this beautiful lake. She came here when she was a kid, and actually, the other family she was with carved their name not into the giant chandelier tree, the drive through tree, but into the giant fallen log of one of its famous counterparts over here. We're hunting for it right now. Oh, there it is, right there. Fawcett. It's getting kind of faded right there. Look at that. F A W C E T. Allie's uh, friend's dad just busted out the knife and started carving that when they were here, setting a very bad example. Look at this right underneath it. J and A, Justin and Allie. I didn't carve this though, this was already here for us, but we've adopted it, this is ours now. We're taking it. And look over here, these were brand new the last time we were here. These stumps, these trees right here that had fallen down, look at them, were turned in to carved Bigfoots. Uh oh, this carved Bigfoot lost one of his big foots. Over, over, you know. Oh man, you guys, I gotta tell you. I know about the Fermi paradox and everything. I know there's a high likelihood that out there in this infinite universe there's extraterrestrial life, which I hate. I really don't want that to be true. I don't want there to be aliens. But I do wish so hard there was such a thing as Bigfoot, and I can't bring myself to believe because that show Finding Bigfoot ruined it. You all ruined it, Finding Bigfoot! They turned the mythical Sasquatch into a joke. Aw, oh, Squatches love pine cones and berries. Aw, oh, Squatches love this. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this show. It was entertaining. I love Bobo. But dude, they definitely turned the last hope of serious Squatching 
the Bigfoot Research Organization into kind of a laughing stock by telling us all what squatches do and how they live and how they use their playing cards and everything and never finding one. They should have called that show Not Finding Bigfoot because that's all they did. Not find Bigfoot. Wow. Dude, look at the size of that tree. 315 feet is like a freaking skyscraper. And way at the bottom, look at that little teeny hole for the cars to go through. Allie and I are gonna take a little stroll in there right now. Turn this drive through tree into a walk through attraction. But look at this little sign here. For a split second, I thought it said, please do not gross fence. I don't know why it would say that ever. Please do not gross fence. Okay, the silent electric car is out of the way. All right, here we go. Going back in. Chandelier tree. It's funny because when you get in here, you always think you're going to be able to like look up and see something. It's just this little crack. Well, that's about it. Not much to see in here. Matter of fact, look at it. It's not much taller than you. You're five foot. <laughs> I'm six foot. I'm exactly a foot taller than you. The top of my hat probably gives me another inch. And look at this. I'm right there at the limit. Yeah, the van definitely wouldn't have fit in here, but not by, it's not, it's not that much of a stretch, really. Someone could get a hacksaw out, you know, just go to town on that thing, make a little extra room, and we, we could pull through there. But no, I guess you need the structural stability to hold this giant chandelier tree up. If you were wondering why it's called the chandelier tree, by the way, and you haven't ever seen us film here before, take a stand back. Look at that. Look at that thing. Look at the arms on that thing. Yes. Like a giant candelabra. Should have been the candelabra tree. Oh, and then there's this. The bestest poem. I love reading this in the redwoods. Beautiful. And then look, we got a real redwood wagon. All right, guys. I love you very much. We've had a lot of fun today. But this is where we are going to leave you here at the chandelier tree because Allie and I are going to take a little romantic drive through the redwoods out to the coast and continue our adventure. We can exit through the gift shop. We'll go poke our nose in there. But pretty much we are done now. Speaking of gift shops, don't forget we've got sick new merch and more coming at the online store, our online store, for our show here. If you want to support our small business, between her school and everything else, Allie packs all those orders. They all ship out of our house. So it's a small operation. Get it? Because Allie's short. Small operation. Small operation. Okay, never mind. Definitely go backwards and check out our previous Redwood Highway adventures and you'll have done your duty. You can... Go home and sleep well. And I will see you guys in just a little bit. Unless you're on Patreon. Then I'll see you even sooner. Bye-bye. Redwood thing, drive through tree. Expect a lot of forest themed stuff, right? Right. You expect carved trees and carved bears, that is for sure. You expect redwood boxes, you expect redwood clocks, maybe. What I wasn't expecting was an alligator. Much less two alligators. Weird. Look at this. It's a banana slug. These things are all over the forest up here. Look. Yeah, but don't hug him though. That's a smug slug. <laughs> okay, just kidding. You can hug him. Aww. Look at that thing. I am pretty sure that's a werewolf in that truck right there. Fresh clean threads, fresh, fresh clean teas. Huh. Dude, that is one very tall totem pole. That is one very tall potem pole. Potem pole?